Hello and welcome to another edition of Kimo Toaster Video Magazine. I'm your host, Jake Vickers. In this edition, we're going to explain Qmail taps. Uh, this is a feature that's been requested by a lot of people over the years, and it's been a part of Qmail Toaster in general for quite a while now. Uh, what Qmail taps do is they allow you to uh, do what's called tapping an email or domain, uh, in, which just in general terms means to make a copy of all incoming or outgoing emails for either a particular user or for an entire domain. And you send those off to a separate location, and that way you can have for the emails for archiving purposes or legal purposes. Now I know here in the United States where I'm located, uh, financial institutions are required to keep you a copy of all incoming and outgoing emails. Uh, also any company that is publicly traded uh, and a lot of uh, government organizations also uh, have to keep copies of all incoming and outgoing emails. You'll need to check what type of company you're setting this server up for and then uh, investigate what type of laws are required to uh, run a successful mail server for them. I also know that uh, the Keymail Taps patch and copying all of the emails does uh, fulfill or satisfy uh, some laws for German and Swiss uh, in those countries as well. They have some laws where uh, any email that gets accepted uh, by ISPs you have to keep a copy of um, and also any email that goes out for I'm not really sure the per period of time but I do know they have to keep a copy of it. Um, I know specifically for uh, those countries it's only for emails that you're accepting. Now the TAPS will not keep a copy of any emails that are blocked due to uh, blacklists or if you happen to be running a nice front end like Spamdyke uh, reverse DNS checks where the email gets uh, the connection gets denied and you're not actually accepting the email. I know in those countries you have to keep a copy of any email that you do accept uh, even if it is spam so if you get an email in and it is spam and spam assassin marks it you still have to keep a copy of it for legal purposes that may or may not be true for your organization and your server or your company you'll need to uh, check into the laws for that uh, to paraphrase that I give it to you kind of verbatim Qmail taps makes a copy of all incoming and or outgoing emails either for the entire server an entire domain or a specific user and it keeps a copy of any of those emails or taps them for any emails that it actually accepts that make it through any reverse DNS checks or SM uh, I'm sorry blacklist checks so if your server begins to accept the message then it will actually keep a copy of it regardless of whether or not it passes the spam tests or not uh, or even has a virus in it or not now a little caveat to this is you definitely need a separate domain to tap the email into otherwise you're going to create what's called a circular loop if you tap all of the email for one domain and you send it to uh, we'll use example.com so you're, you're tapping all of the email for example.com and you want it to go to the email address archive at example.com you're creating what's called a circular uh, well you're creating a circular issue there because any email that comes in is going to get tapped and it's going to go to archive example dot com which is getting tapped which is going to send another copy to archive at example dot com which is getting tapped which is going to and you can see where this is going to go uh, you end up being in a circular loop and it can really eat up some hard drive space and cause you some issues uh, pretty quickly so you definitely want a separate domain to tap the email into it doesn't necessarily have to be a real domain. You can, if you're just going to like tap all of the email for your work address or, or your work domain, you can just create, uh, say, your organization's uh, domain is example.com once again. You can create uh, local.example.com or fakeexample.com or whatever else you want to call it. It doesn't actually have to be a real domain if it's going to be on the same server. It only has to be a real domain if you're going to be sending or tapping all of those emails to a separate server. Then it will have to be a uh, actual real domain, or at least the other server will have to be set up to accept email for that domain if you're going to do some fancy stuff with SMTP routing and whatnot. So, 
I think we ought to go ahead and just kind of start jumping into it. Let's get logged into our system here. And just a little thing I always like to do, I always like to double check and make sure that my system is running, there's no crashes or anything. Uh, this is still the same system we set up in the previous videos. This is going to be the system that I pretty much work on throughout all of the videos. And for the purposes of this example, um, we're going to, uh, we'll show you a couple different scenarios. We're going to use example.com and the first thing you need to do is you need to get into your var uh, qmail control directory obviously that's where all of your control files are located and that's where you're going to need to do uh, all your configuration for qmail in general you get a directory listing here now the taps file is not created by default uh, you actually if the patch is in there but it's deactivated until you create the taps file so we'll go ahead and we'll create the taps file. It's just called taps. And the first example we're going to show you is we're going to tap the entire domain. So once again, our, our organization's email domain is example.com, and you have uh, al at example.com, bob at example.com, chester at example.com, and so on and so forth. Uh, you're going to go ahead and create a second domain um, I guess we should do that before we create the tap file here. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll create a separate domain. Uh, let's check and make sure example.com is here. And no, it is not. Okay. So we'll create example.com. With the password of example. Okay, entry is out of order. Oh, oh, okay, it was just messing up in the configuration file. Um, sorry about that, a little troubleshooting there. I just remembered that we had put it in uh, our receipt host file, and that's why it was showing the auto order error. Um, so let's go ahead and let's correct that. Okay, we'll go ahead and it should be okay there. So now we should have example.com there. Okay, so now we're going to go back and we're going to add another domain. Uh, and this is going to be the domain we tap to. Now remember, this does not have to be a real domain, so we'll just call it fakedomain.com with the password of fake. And there we go. So now let's go ahead and get into our taps file. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, or the first example we're going to use is we're going to tap the entire example.com domain. So to do this, we put in dot star at example.com colon, uh, we need to give it a real user, so we'll say postmaster at fakedomain.com. Okay, now what this does is this says that any, uh, this is using Perl regrex, um, so the period means match any character um, at or any combination thereof with the star uh, match any and all characters at example.com and since this is the taps file it's telling it to match anything and everything at example.com and tap it and send a copy of it to postmaster at fake domain.com now this is going to be for all incoming and outgoing emails so we'll go ahead and we'll save this and that's all you have to do for the taps file. Now when any email comes in for any user at example.com, it's going to be tapped and a copy is going to be sent over to postmaster at fakedomain.com. You don't have to restart QMail, you don't have to rebuild any data uh, CDBs or anything like that. So once again, we'll go back in here and say you wanted to send it to, say you had another account and you called it archive. You could tap everything that comes in or leaves for example.com and send it to archive at fakedomain.com. Now the next example we'll show you 
is how to tap a specific email address. Uh, and this one's pretty straightforward. Say we have bob at example.com and we want to tap all of Bob, uh, Bob at example.com's emails because uh, for whatever reason uh, you need a copy of all of his incoming outgoing emails whether that's for archival purposes or auditing purposes or he's the CPA and he's dealing with uh, something that legally requires a copy of all incoming outgoing emails whatever reason I personally don't care you can snoop on whoever you want but okay so we have Bob at example.com we want to tap all of his emails so we do Bob at example.com colon and we're going to send them to bob at fakedomain.com now remember any tap you, you do has to go to a valid email address so if we're going to tap bob at example.com and send it to bob at fakedomain.com you need to make sure that you're going to go over there and actually create the bob at fake domain email address otherwise this is going to cause you some other headaches and issues and we will save and close that file go ahead and get a cat of our tabs so we can see what's in there and once again you do not need to restart Qmail <clears throat> but now any emails that um, come in for Bob or Bob sends from example.com are going to get tapped or a copy is going to be sent to Bob at fake domain dot com um, this logic here probably wouldn't work too well you will want either one or the other um, because you're kind of hitting a little bit of circular logic here too. You're tapping the entire domain and you're tapping a single user. So this, you know, probably not the best way to do that. You'll won't want to mix the two. Let's go ahead and edit our taps file again, and we'll remove these entries. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is if you want to tap everything for your email server. Now this is going to be all incoming and all outgoing emails, regardless. Uh, of who the user is uh, or whatever. Now to do this you definitely need to have an external email account. Uh, you cannot put the domain on this machine even if it's a fake domain because you're going to be tapping everything for the server and you get caught in that circular loop again. So say we have a external server that we built using these video tutorials for absolutely nothing but archiving emails and we'll say that that server we set up a domain on it uh, called uh, otherserver.com and we want to tap everything that comes in and out for our uh, email server here regardless of what domain it is or what email address it is to do that you just do period star colon which means match everything regardless of what characters are in there that includes the at and the domain designator and we'll call it taps at uh, oh I forgot what we we're gonna call the other server now um, we'll say we we set up a domain on the other server called tap server and the user uh, is taps and then you would save and close this and now what this is gonna do is period star tells the tap patch to match everything that comes in and out for the server and tap it and send a copy of it to taps at tapserver.com. Now remember, you have to have a remote email server for this because uh, you're going to get caught in some circular logic. And you can set up another email server using these video tutorials or in, you know, build it yourself, do whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be a Qmail server. Uh, just make sure that you actually do have a domain on there and a valid email account to tap all of the mail to. It doesn't have to, once again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a valid domain. You could do some SMTP routing magic and send it over to a actual fake domain. But as far as the mail server is concerned, it'd be a real domain. So go ahead and we'll save and we'll close out of here and we'll cat our taps file and once again you do not need to restart or reload Qmail in any way shape or form to have this applied and now any email that comes in for our server regardless of the domain or regardless of the user is going to get forwarded to taps at tapserver.com since we're not actually going to be running any taps on here we'll go ahead and we can just remove the file and that turns your taps off easy as pie. Um, now your mail server acts like normal. But once again, if you want to tap 
a specific domain, um, you just create the taps file and you'd put dot star at domain dot com colon the address you want to send it to and that will tell the taps patch to make a copy of all incoming and outgoing email and send it off to the other server uh, or other domain which once again does not have to necessarily be a valid domain on the server it can be anything you want you can see in uh, some of the previous examples we did create a domain called fake domain dot com that we tapped all of the email to and that is taps in a nutshell uh, you do not have some of the granular control in QML Toaster with a taps patch. Um, when you tap an email address or tap a domain, you get everything, incoming and outgoing. You can't differentiate between either or. Uh, I know some other mail servers and some other patches for QML in general, you can differentiate between them, um, and that may be a feature added in QML Toaster in the future, but it is not at this time. So when you tap something, you get all incoming and outgoing. And that concludes this video tutorial, and uh, hopefully this should have explained the QML taps to you, and you should have a thorough understanding of it and how it works. You can do some advanced settings with the taps. Um, if you look up uh, Perl Regex and use any of those uh, matches, you can uh, match specific email addresses or a combination of characters or whatever you want. Um, I'd say probably 99% of the people either tap one email address or one domain uh, or the entire server. Uh, so using that advanced uh, uh, pattern recognition is just not something you really need. Uh, last little note with the QML taps, you can stack it. So if you have, say, 50 domains on the server but you want to tap 10 of them, you can just put uh, one tap per line in that taps file and it'll tap them. You don't have to do all 50 of them. It's not an all or nothing type thing. You just put in the 10 that you want to tap, and it will then start tapping it and sending it off to the destination you define. And once again, that concludes our video tutorial. And you should understand taps pretty well now. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.